whole point of everything we learned in the last two videos for section 5.5 and finding the real zeros of a function is so that we can find the real zeros of a function. Okay? So to do that, we need to use the rational roots theorem, find the potential rational zeros, and then use synthetic division to plug those into a function, and then use the factor theorem or the remainder theorem to determine whether or not those potential rational zeros actually are or not. So now at this point you're watching this late at night and you have no idea what I just said. Let's just do an example. Find all real zeros up. 2x to the fourth plus 13x cubed plus 29x squared plus 27x plus 9. I chose a nice big one. What is the degree of this function? Well, the degree is 4. Degree 4 means there will be exactly four zeros. But some of them might be complex or imaginary. So there will be four or less real zeros, so not imaginary ones, ones that actually cross the x-axis. Okay, so it's always good to know how many of something we're trying to find. Four at the most. Next thing we're going to do is our rational roots theorem, so that we can find the potential rational zeros of this function. So that's where we take the 9, factors of 9 divided by factors of 2. So factors of 9 are 9, 3, and 1. Factors of 2 are 2 and 1. So that gives us possible answers of 9 over 2, 9, plus or minus of course, plus or minus 3 over 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 1 over 2, and plus or minus 1. That gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 2, 12 possible things to try with synthetic division instead of infinitely many. Okay, so now we take the numbers that we figured out could be zeros, could be zeros. It's just possible, that's all, not definite. Okay, and we start dividing them using synthetic division and see if they work. Let's try 9. Um, I'm going to avoid the fractions at first because dividing with fractions and synthetic division is a little bit annoying. It does work, but just for the sake of ease, I'm going to try the ones that are not fractions first and hope that I'm not going to have to deal with the fractions later. Let's just start with the first one, 9, and see how that one goes. So I'm going to take the possible 0, 9, and plug it into our function using synthetic division. So 2, 13, 29, 27, 9. Okay, so quickly I start multiplying together, and I should start noticing, like immediately, that these numbers are just going to keep getting bigger. Since this is a positive number, and these are all positive numbers, this number is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger numbers till we get to the end, and then we're going to add 9, and they're all going to be positive, and there's no way we're ever going to get 0. So this one we can throw out without even finishing it. It's not going to work. In fact, I get the impression that all of our answers are going to be negative, because we, if we try this with any positive root, we're going to have this same type of thing happen, not as big a numbers as we get with the 9, but any of these positives times positives are going to keep getting bigger and not end up at 0. 
So let's start trying some negatives instead. Um, I really didn't like working with nine, it was too big. Let's go a little bit smaller, like a negative three perhaps. Two, 13, 29, 27, nine. Okay, bring down the two, two times negative three is negative six, 13 minus six is seven, seven times negative three is negative 21, 29 minus 21 is eight, eight times negative three is negative 24, 27 minus 24 is three, three times a negative three is a negative nine. <gasps> Guess what? We found it. We found one of the possible four zeros. So that means it's possible that four of these would work. We just finally found one of the 12 that worked. And in fact, by doing this problem, we figured out that we really only had six that we had to try because the positive ones weren't gonna work. Okay, now what does this actually mean? This means that x plus three is a factor and we're left with two x cubed plus seven x squared plus eight x plus three. We can now do this whole process again, but with the smaller problem. Why can we use the smaller problem? Well, because we already factored this out. So once you factor something out, you just factor what's left. You could do your whole potential rationals again. The only difference would be that you have three and one over two and one. The nine is not involved anymore, so we really can actually throw those out completely. Okay, so now let's choose something else to plug in. I don't know how we choose. Well, actually, I do know how we choose. And because you guys are lacking for so much time, here's what I recommend, and I'm going to go ahead and show you this right now. Use your graphing calculator or your iPod app. That's not what I want. Type in the problem you're working with, which I could either let it be this original problem, or at this point, since I'm already partway through, I think I'm just gonna plug this in. I don't know, maybe I should do this one from the beginning. This will save you time and I approve it. The only reason I approve it though is that you must, 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 after you've used this way to save you time, you must show your answer by hand. But this helps you so that you don't have to worry about finding answers that don't work because you will know already what they are. You just have to show me by hand that you know what they are. So there's our function going in here, plus 27x plus nine. Okay, so there I've typed the function in. Now I'm gonna go to my window and just change it to standard. I absolutely know I can do standard because remember how my zeros are gonna be between nine and negative nine? So doing a standard graph of negative 10 to 10 will be perfect. And I could type that in the window, but a faster way to do that is to go to zoom, do six for zoom standard, graph your function. Okay, so see how we can see all the x-intercepts are negative. There are no positive x-intercepts, so that is confirmed. And then I think I wanna zoom in a little bit. Let's go ahead and go to the window and maybe I'll do negative five to zero instead because I know they're all negative and then I'll just go ahead and leave the y value. Okay, where does it look like the zeros are? It's still a little difficult to tell right here. Maybe I wanna go ahead and change my y value as well. So negative five to five perhaps. Okay, I still can't tell exactly what's happening here. I can definitely see that I have a, an x-intercept at negative three. It looks like there might be an x-intercept at negative one and a half. It's also possible there might be an x-intercept at negative one. So what graphing it does to save you time is to show you wh where those x-intercepts are. So those are the problems you're trying in your synthetic division instead of trying things that don't work saves a ton of time and I approve as long as you show me the synthetic division to prove your answer. Okay, so I think I said that maybe negative one looked like it would work. So let's go ahead with this answer and try the negative one. So I'm gonna start with this answer instead of the original problems because that way it's a little bit smaller and if it's a factor of this little one, it's also a factor of our original big problem. Okay, let's go ahead and bring down the two. Two times negative one is negative two. Seven minus two is five. Five times negative one is negative five. 
8 minus 5 is 3, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, 0. So then now we know that a factor is x plus 3, another factor is x plus 1 because the 0 is negative 1, and now we're left with 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. We could continue this process with the potential, potential zeros or with the numbers that look like they would work on the calculator and do another synthetic division, but it's usually accepted to, at this point, now that you have it down to a quadratic, to simply solve the quadratic. Now, if you have a hard time solving quadratics either by factoring or by quadratic formula, you might want to go ahead and use synthetic division again and try some more and see what works. But I'm going to go ahead and review solving this tr quadratic. I'm going to try solving it by factoring, but you could also use quadratic formula, and you will have to use quadratic formula in section 5.6. 2x squared plus, okay, this is our complicated factoring, so 2 times 3 is 6. Factors of 6 that add up to 5 are simply 2 and 3, so I'm going to rewrite those. So my 2 plus 3 is 5, and then I just have that 3 at the end. So I've taken that factor and rewritten it like this so that I can factor by grouping. So I factor out a 2, and I have x plus 1 left in there. And then I factor out a 3, and I have x plus 1 left in there. So that gives me factors 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. All right, well, there's two more factors. So that means that there's two other zeros that go with that, negative 3 halves and negative 1. Wait, didn't we already get a negative 1 for a 0? Well, that just means it has a multiplicity of 2. Okay, so if what we're doing here is finding the real zeros, we have found them, and there's four of them. There's negative three, there's negative one twice. You don't need to write it twice. You can just say it has a multiplicity of two if you need the multiplicity. And we have negative three halves, which we could have found using synthetic division. Um, synthetic division with fractions isn't as bad as you might think. Uh, sometimes it is. Okay. Now, it's always nice to write your function in factored form. So write the entire function back down again, but this time write it in factored form instead of in general form. So our function f of x will be x plus 3, x plus 1, quantity squared, and 2x plus 3. And it does not matter what order you write the factors in, they can go in any order as long as they are all there. 